Right, when you see the word rational, it means we're talking about fractions. So this is a theorem that will help you determine the possible zeros of a function that are rational, which means I'm going to help you figure out the possibilities <coughs> for your zeros that can be written as <coughs> what? Factors. The possible zeros of your function that can be written as a fraction. Now this guy will not tell you, it will not give you any clues as to zeros that are complex <coughs> or zeros that are <coughs> or zeros that are radical. <coughs> <laughs> If P over Q, of course this guy is in lowest terms, if P over Q is a zero of your function F of X, then this is where the P and the Q come from. Okay? Then P, P is a factor of the constant term, and q is a factor of the lead coefficient. <laughs> you know what I mean by the constant term, right? Bless you. Do you know what I mean by the lead coefficient? <coughs> yes, you don't. Ready. Ask your question, what? You know what I mean by a constant term, right? <coughs> it's a constant. X. X is not a constant, it's a variable. But your lead coefficient is the coefficient of your highest degree term. So if, if I were to say this, f of x equals x to the third plus 4x squared plus x minus 6. How many zeros will I have here? Three. Am I giving you any of them? No. If I gave you one zero or one <laughs> factor, you could take something that's degree three and it would reduce to be what? Okay. Degree two and then you're home free, right? Once you get to something that's quadratic, it's easy. But I, don't, I haven't given you anything here. I haven't told you where to start anywhere. But if we use the rational zeros theorem, we're going to see that it's kind of nice. It gives us an idea about where to go. So my zeros will be of the form P over Q. What did the P come from? Factors of the constant term. The constant term is 6, right? What are factors of 6? six one, three. Two and three. So 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Do you all agree? Now I'm going to put a plus or a minus in front of this because it doesn't tell you anything about the sign, if it should be positive or negative. Now your Q is the lead coefficient. One. Your lead coefficient is 1, so I mean Q is actually factors of that, so it's just going to be 1, right? So your possible rational zeros would be 1, 2, plus or minus, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6, right? I want you to understand what this is saying. If you have a zero for this polynomial that can be written as a fraction, you hear me? If a zero for this guy can be written as a fraction, it has to be one of these guys. That's necessario. Are you with me? That means if you come up and say, Mr. Craig, I found that one of my solutions is 1 over 5. How could you ever get 1 over 5? Do you understand what I'm saying now? Could x equals 5 be a solution? No. Could x equals 3 be a solution? Maybe. We just have to figure it out, right? Now, let, let's do the easy stuff. Let's make it super easy on you. What numbers do you think would be the easiest ones to check? Well, I would say 1 and negative 1 first. Okay. Let me show you how easy it is to check to see if 1 is a 0. Combine all of these coefficients and the constant. What's 1 plus 4 plus 1 minus 6? Zero. That means that 1 is a 0. Wow. You don't believe me? You know what I'm going to do? 
What am I going to do? That's right, those of you who are not talking, this synthetic division. Now, we just said that one, one works, right? So that means my k value is 1. So that's my k coefficients x to the third, x squared, x, and my constant. So write my coefficients. What are they? 1, 4, Do you all agree with that? Now do your synthetic division and my remainder better be what? Yeah. Right, no, you're right. It's supposed to be zero. Didn't we say one gives us zero? Thought we were gonna get one. Yeah. Thought we were gonna get the number one at the end? We're using the k value of one. Now, if this k value is 1, that means the factor we're looking at is what? If the k is 1, that came from a factor of what? x minus 1. So let's do the synthetic division. This gives me 1. Multiply, you get what? Add, you get 5. Multiply, you get 5. Add, you get 6. Multiply, you get... My remainder is... <coughs> What was it supposed to be? Well, we, we, we saw that if I just add those coefficients, I get zero, so it, it better have worked. How many zeros did I expect here? Three. 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 How many have I found? Four. Which means if I took that guy out, my guy that starts as x to the third is now with the form x squared, right? So if I take this guy that's remaining, 1x squared, 5x plus 6, and I can set him equal to 0. Can you solve that? How does it factor? x plus 3, x plus 2. So what does x equal here? So the, on the, when you're determining the first uh, k, yeah. you, it's just kind of a hit or miss. You know, it, exactly right. You get one. When you're trying to whether find whether it's x to the fifth or whatever, you still got to try one to get your next and so forth and so forth. Okay. Right, you're exactly right. When we're trying to figure out one that works, it's going to be guess and check. The easy ones to do are is one. To check one, you just add these coefficients together. If it's zero, you're good. Yeah. To check negative one, it's almost the same thing. If it's an odd power, you do the opposite of the sign. So if I do negative one plus four minus 1 because it's the opposite sign. So negative 1 plus 4 is 3, minus 1 is 2, minus 6 is not 0. After that, I'll probably move on to 2 and negative 2. Keep the numbers smaller, but I don't want to have to plug 2 in here or some of these larger numbers, so I might go to the synthetic division to quickly do that. Okay? Well, now look at my... be able to go back and plug it in and, and then to yes. check to be sure you're... Now look at my answers here. Are these answers acceptable and do they match up with what my possibilities were? Yeah, yeah here's negative three and here's negative two. They were possible rational zeros. So it, it matches up, it makes sense. So when I list my zeros, I'm actually gonna say what? The zeros are negative three, negative two, and one. Now, what if I went further and I said, what are the factors? If I said factor this guy, that means f of x is equal to, what factors does this give you? x minus, x minus 1, and you already know what these factors are right here. <coughs> Do you all agree that these are linear factors broken down all the way? Your original polynomial is equal to this guy right here. How many zeros do I have? Three. How many did I expect to get? Three. Do they all have to be different? <coughs> do your zeros, if you have three, do they all have to be different? No, you could have the same zero show up more than once. And that leads to something called multiplicity, which deals with graphing 
we'll talk about that. Um, not today.